Hello. Thank you so much, Winona, for doing this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Um, our podcast is about you and your journey in music and how you got to where you are today. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's been a journey. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear it. Awesome. Um, so from S Sweden originally. Yeah. Tell me about that. Born and raised? Yeah, I was. I actually grew up on a on an island in Sweden, like in the middle of Sweden. Okay. It's called uh, it's called Solaran Solans A in Swedish, um, but in English it's like Island of the Sun. Oh, cool. So it's like a super tiny little place with like nine hundred people and a lot of animals. And, wow. Um, yeah. Have you been to Sweden? I have not been to Sweden. I would love to go to Sweden though. But 900 yeah. people, I mean, so is it like centered yeah. in, because yeah, I would it's assume like in that... a lake. It's like wow. in a lake. So there's like, um, you can drive to the island from Stockholm in like four or five hours, depending oh. on how fast you're driving. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, but... like in, in that sense, like 900 people, do you know, like everybody in the, in the area would think like my high school had like 1200 people in just my graduating <laughs> class. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you kind of know, uh, everyone around there, like not everyone, because there's a lot of people like moving from big cities. Um, so it's like, you know, it's, it's one of those places that people like come to, to like relax mm -hmm. almost, you know, kind of like, just getting away from this big city life. Sure, sure. Um, are, are there like um, like venues, so to speak? Like, were you able to, like growing up, see anybody playing, like performing or anything, like live music wise? Not on the, I, yeah, like, like I, I didn't, I, I traveled a lot when I was a kid. So I would still like, um, we would go and see, I think I saw like Beach Boys actually. When I wow. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't remember how old I was. Uh, that was actually also there's a super like beautiful uh, venue that's pretty close to the island. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you have a, a phone or something that you can Google. I it's can called, Google. It's called Dalhalla. D-A-L-H-A-L-L-A. -L -L <laughs> oh, I found it. Yeah. I did. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Right? It's like yeah. in the middle of like a forest. Yeah. Wow. And there's a waterfall. It's Am I looking beautiful. at the right thing? That is so sick. That's the coolest venue I've ever seen. Right? Yeah. So it's super close to the island. So there's a lot of like, like I think Patti Smith played there and a lot of, yeah, Beach Boys play there and uh, a lot of like amazing, like big artists. Wow. Um, so how do they set it up? Are you sitting on those rocks? Like, how, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's like, a, are you looking at the right thing? I think so. Because <laughs> there's like a whole thing with like shares and stuff. Oh, okay. Now I see it. So, so it's pointing the, 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 the stairs are pointing to, or the, the seats are pointing towards the stage, which is in front of what I was looking at. I was looking at the back yeah. of the stage. Oh. I was like, oh, whoa, that be... that's yeah. pretty intense if you're sitting on that. But what, but still, that's awesome. It kind of looks like a more uh, amazing version of like Red Rocks in uh, Colorado. Mm. Is oh. the acoustics there like pretty insane? Yeah, it's it's insane. It's, it's one of the most um, like magical and uh, Ugh, it's 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 like one of my favorite venues. And that is it's pretty, so awesome. Yeah, so there is a lot of fun. I think like the place where I grew up, like the whole like uh, area, it's like very. Uh, there's a lot of art and music, and when I grew up, I played uh, a lot of folk music mm -hmm. uh, and like violin and piano and stuff. Like how that. how old were you when you was violin first or piano first? Uh, violin was first. And how old were you when you learned violin? Five. <laughs> wow, five. So were your parents yeah. musical? Like, how did how did you get involved in violin? I think no. Like, <laughs> my grandma was a singer. Oh, okay. So she was um, a 
an incredible singer. She was accepted to the Swedish, like the Royal uh, Opera in Stockholm, but wow. her family, her family didn't have any money, so they couldn't couldn't send her. Uh, um, but she would always uh, sing, like uh, you know, every chance she got, she would sing like for everyone and mm-hmm. like at weddings and stuff like that. So, um, but my mom and dad, no, like. Honestly, no. <laughs> don't wanna be don't wanna be mean, but no. Like my mom tried to learn violin and my my remember my friend told me that it sounded like a cat that was getting strangled. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, what drew, yeah, what drew you to violin? Uh what did you say? What drew you to the like why did you decide to play the violin uh, at five? Uh my mom wanted me I think it was one of her favorite instruments. And she really okay. loved the way that it sounded, and maybe because she couldn't learn, she was like, "I'm gonna just have my daughter play violin." <laughs> <laughs> Live vicariously through you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How long and did then, you play violin for? Uh, for ten years. Oh wow! Yeah. So you can obviously still play it. I actually haven't played it since I was fifteen. No. Oh, but I, if you picked it up, do you think you could noodle around and figure it out? I bet so. Uh, I tried. Um, I tried a couple times, but I don't like being bad at stuff. Okay. You know? So I feel like I don't know. I just I feel like it's hard to pick it up right now. To I, I, it I, up. Yeah, I I want to do it. Um, uh, maybe when nobody's listening, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> just there go out go. in the woods for a couple of days, and bring <laughs> and the violin, relearn the violin. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. What up? Do so you know can't... how to play? I, I don't know. I wish. It's such a beautiful oh. instrument. Yeah, it is. It's so cool. I wish I could play it now. There's always there's always uh, another time to, to learn or, you know, soon enough. <laughs> like you said, yeah. go out to the woods and, and, and learn it there. Well, what about piano? How old were you when you learned piano? Uh, I was nine. Nine? Okay. Did you keep mm-hmm. up with that one or also? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Still, so you still play piano? Yeah, I think I, I like when I grew up, I think I was just, you know, I thought the piano was so much cooler than playing a violin. So I think I wanted to be, you know, I don't know, I had like a little rebel against my parents <laughs> when I was 15. And I'm, I was like, I'm not going to play violin anymore. I'm just going to sing and play piano. <laughs> okay. when, when did you start singing? Early, early on as well? Yeah, super early. Like I, I started like writing books and stuff when I was a kid because I wanted to be a writer. Wow. Uh, like super dramatic books. Uh, so my parent, like my teachers, would call my parents and be like, you know, oh, <laughs> is she okay? <laughs> is she all right. <laughs> like, because, <laughs> um, yeah, because I I wrote very dramatic stuff, and uh, and then I just started uh, turning like little stories and poems that I wrote uh, into songs. Not that I was like good, but mm. I just continued doing it for a long time. And then I, I learned how to like, um, I was sitting like in my, in my bedroom and just, I think I had a guitar. What was it called? Like the, the classic thing that you're like, uh, mm. The, the music program that you create, like on um, oh, like Garage like, Band or something, yeah, 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 okay, Garage Band. And I would just play piano and put a lot of reverb on it, and I would just make songs. So, wow, many songs. so you just record them yourself? Would you put them yeah. up like on YouTube or anything, or were they just for you? No, no, I would put up a few things on my Facebook, I remember, and and uh, yeah, but that's that's it, kind of, and then I would, um. I would I would always like play at stuff just you know weddings or uh, like sport happenings and stuff because really? like yeah like when I was super young. How did you get involved with that? Did you were and were you playing original songs or was it mainly just cover songs? There was a lot of cover songs and some originals. Poor people heard my. <laughs> <laughs> horrible <laughs> heartbreak song no just kidding no but um yeah I think like 
Um, I would play at like this skiing thing because it's like in the area where I grew up, like the sports is like the main thing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So it's a lot of like people move from like uh, all around the world to like go there and play hockey and like skiing and stuff like that. Okay. So, and- so that's like the main thing. So you'd be able to perform at like these yeah. ski events or like hockey yeah. games and stuff. Yeah, wow. mostly like, uh, yeah, not um, I would do like the skiing. Skiing I events. Don't, I don't, I don't like hockey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did so? How did you progress? Progress. What was the next step from going from playing at these, you know, sporting events? Like, how did you get into songwriting and eventually, obviously, signing to Atlantic and working with Chainsmokers and and everybody else that you've worked with? Like, how did how did the progression work for you? I think it like happened when I moved to Stockholm. Okay. So I moved to I moved to Stockholm when I when I was like nineteen, eighteen or nineteen, and uh, and then I I just met a lot of creative people and I actually I I don't know how it happened because it was just meeting someone at a party and talking about music and I started doing like my own. Uh, I started like producing by myself and I, I, I would just send them my demos and then I started working with people and I just got into the whole, you know, music business. It's like when you know someone, it's that person knows somebody else who knows somebody else. So mm-hmm. it's like, um, and, uh, and then I met, a lot of wrong people who didn't want like they didn't have my best interest because mm-hmm. you have to do that as well especially like as a female mm-hmm. uh and the music industry is like a very male dominated uh industry business, sure yeah um, industry so i think just finding my confidence and like because in the beginning i feel like i had like so many people who wanted to like shape me into something that i couldn't really identify with and they mm-hmm. wanted to like just create a product and put me into the frame and i i just it didn't feel authentic to me so um but then i met um derek at neo gold uh, Mm -hmm. at a a writing camp in nicaragua like 2000 wow yeah in the middle of the jungle oh that's pretty cool tell me about that yeah that was amazing that was like one of my best experiences in my life just they invited me. I think they called me like one week before the uh, before the trip, and they were like, "So we have one one spot over. Do you want to go to? Do you want to go to Nicaragua in two weeks?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> <laughs> Had you ever traveled outside of the country at that point, or no? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. of course. But I yeah, like, but I I, I haven't like going that far like just uh-huh. by myself sure yeah. and in the middle um, of the jungle I mean, yeah wow. <laughs> it was amazing so many like talented songwriters and producers from mm-hmm. uh, all around the world like mostly LA though uh, but yeah and I just I loved the whole neon gold team and and then I met Atlantic and it mm-hmm. all just happened pretty naturally and I found like really good people around me mm-hmm. it's, it's important sure so important but yeah I know it's a weird story it's like how did you come from this right. tiny little island and right like, to make it country to... uh-huh but with uh, like to get that that phone call to go to Nicaragua was that because pr- prior to that you had worked with what so not right was that before uh, no. or was that I after in Nicaragua actually oh you did okay mm-hmm. okay so that's how that relationship formed then yeah no like prior to that I I was working with a lot of um people in Sweden and like and I went to London to meet with some people uh to sign a management deal that I didn't end up signing because mm-hmm. I found uh I found my manager in Sweden Jacob his name is Jacob and he's amazing and uh, so he was the one who was in contact with Neon Gold and okay and 
and we just started working. I, I didn't know him for that long, and he just called and he was like, "So they have, they have a spot. Do you want to go?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course I want to go." <laughs> right, sure. And then from there, that's how you. That's when you met. What's or not? What's or not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you obviously <laughs> were featured on on the on the song uh, "Beautiful." And yeah. from there, and then how did you like, so the, the next record that you put out, was that the one where you featured with the chain smokers? Yeah. Wow. So that that's huge. I mean, how, how did that relationship form? Same way. Obviously Same not in Nicaragua. <laughs> that's how I keep. No. Uh, yeah. I you mean... only collaborate with people from the from from Nicaraguan jungles. <laughs> yeah. That's like thing. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, after the after like I met the right team, I think everything just happened pretty quickly. I I moved to LA and um, I started writing with a lot of people, and then uh, you know I wrote the song Hope, and mm-hmm. and yeah, and the, then the Chain Smokers they loved it and they wanted to work on it with me, so I just um. I met them and we we vibed and I mean I didn't have anything out there at that point when I met mm-hmm. them like so that was like a really bold move for them to like just put all their cards on me mm-hmm. and I'm really happy they did it they were very supportive and I played them like my other music that I was gonna put out and they really they loved it and it was like yeah That's I don't awesome. know I'm I feel really, really blessed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, when did you decide to kind of move into the spotlight yourself and go from co-writing and featuring to, you know, releasing your own music? That was always the plan. Okay. um, To do that. So I think, yeah, I think it was just something that happened pretty like naturally. Um, Like after doing that song with the Chainsmokers, I put out um, He Don't Love Me. And uh, yeah, I think it just, it happened. It was always like a plan to put out my own stuff and be my own artist, Mm -hmm. you know? But yeah. Was He Don't Love Me, was was there a reason why that song became, you know, the... Like when you wrote that, where you're like, okay, this is my the song for me. I'm not going to try to pitch this or give this to anybody else. Or did it just um, kind of happen that way? No, I was writing for my project. So oh, at that I, point. I, I, yeah, I was, I, I like, I, I'm always writing very like personal songs. Mm-hmm. And, and some of them, I feel like they end up with other people because, you know, yeah. And, and, and some of them are, too personal to to just to give, give away. away yeah very cool and then all the, mean, the, those tracks came on to that was on your closure ep yeah and and after that i mean your mo what like where were you because that, that record came out with 2020 or 2019 uh 19 okay or was so, it no i actually yeah like some of the tracks came out 19 and then the ep dropped 2020 okay and what like pretty (laughs) quick early into 2020 like so where were you at when like you know coronavirus first hits and everything shuts down how did that affect you Uh, oh my god it was like such a weird time for Uh everyone obviously but i i just got a new place and and i was supposed to go on tour with a wonder like my first u.s tour Oh, wow. And I was traveling a lot. I was traveling to Sweden, doing my first like TV performances in Sweden and uh, Germany. And I was all around just going to New York and Canada. And uh, everything was so exciting, like so many plans. Mm-hmm. And then like the day when I moved them to the new spot, um, we heard about uh, a lockdown. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden we were sitting in the apartment for like months sure so so none of those plans happened with the tour and everything it was just all canceled mm-hmm. yeah i mean 
it, what a wild time that was. I'm sure yeah. through a wrench and probably in obviously every, your, your U S tour and all of that. Um, yeah. but once, once that all happened, were you writing, which be, what became the she EP or like, how did that, or were those songs that you had already written and kind of had ready prior no, to No, I, I, they were all ready. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I've been writing for so many years that I have mm. like so many songs that I'm, you know, most, most of them are already like pre-made and ready to be you know, released into the world because I write so many things all the time. Mm -hmm. I have so many songs that I can, <laughs> but yeah. And, and like, yeah, because obviously like 2020 was obviously not my most creative year. Mm -hmm. It was a weird year. Just, um, I, I went back to Sweden for a couple months and I, I just recently got back to LA. Um, because uh, yes but I was writing a few things but I'm not really a fan of the zoom sessions when you're supposed to write songs over zoom I think it's not really my cup of tea wasn't yeah do you remember the, <laughs> the first time you did that was it like very strange because I've heard both sides of it where people kind of like it because you can work with people like all over the world and you know on your own time kind mm -hmm. of and you could finish a session then just go lay down on your bed or or whatever but i'm i bet vibing off people in a studio setting would be a lot more <laughs> efficient i don't mm. know i kind of love p meeting people in real life and just you know vibing with them and like it's a different feeling when you see someone in, in reality and you can feel like their their energy and like just talk with them for hours drinking coffee and talk about life and what you want to write about mm -hmm. uh, and of course it's amazing how you can connect with so many people from all around the world like through a computer um but it just doesn't give you the same feeling i just i want to touch people you know mm -hmm. like Sure. No, like this, physically. This is like, yeah, no, no, it's no, not no, like, no, but uh... like, yeah, I just want to be able to like, you know, look someone in the eyes and like in, in real life. Mm -hmm. it's, For sure. It's, it's, it's weird. Yeah. Well, what about like with winter rain? Was that something that was recorded during this? No. no or that was but, all previous too, huh? Yeah. Wow. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah 2020 was not my most creative yeah thinking about it i yeah i wrote of course i wrote some songs that i really love especially when i went back to sweden mm -hmm. um because then i was able to write in person with people oh, okay uh, yeah when when was that was that still in or was that more recently when you were able to that was more that? yeah more recently Okay. And that just was, that actually got the creative juices flowing, being able to be around yeah. people and kind of soak up energy from everyone else. Interesting. Yeah. Cause, and, and the funny thing, cause I was working with so many people in Sweden and like 99% of them had antibody cause they already had the virus because Sweden has been, you know, treating the virus so differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not that it's been a better way. Cause I think it's very irresponsible. <laughs> but people had the was, antibodies <laughs> yeah it was good for me it was good for me it was like oh do you have the antibodies okay then we can work you know <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> that's good well i'm glad you're able to start working again um and you just released a song a couple days ago right yeah and tell me about that uh tell me about your new song and it was released for international women's day uh yeah it was released a couple of days ago but it was all created by women that's amazing feels very, which feels very powerful yeah um you know i read somewhere that it's uh only two percent of all the producers in the world are females two percent whoa 98 percent men. yeah and i think also like part of it is that uh a guy has an easier time calling himself a producer than a female because I think there's a lot of more pressure. And because I was talking to Elio about it, mm -hmm. the girl who's featuring in my song, mm -hmm. and, and she told me that 
even though she was the producer, it was so much harder for her to say that she was a producer because she felt like she was supposed to have, you know, this amount of skills in order uh-huh. to call herself a producer when a guy can have like maybe this None. amount of <laughs> yeah. He I'm can so own Garage Band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think that's also part of it. That's you know. Uh, that's really but, interesting I didn't know that yeah. I didn't know that only two percent wow yeah so I think it's and it's it's mixed by a woman and it's mastered by a woman so it's like all female uh yeah I I just want to do more of that and because there's so many incredibly talented uh, women out there sure. and they they don't really get the same spotlight Mm-hmm. And do, oh. so. I love that. What about the video? Was that all done as well? All women? Or was that a little bit more difficult to pull off that way? No, because of Corona and everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it, it was it was created by Julian Kilstrom, the guy. My oh, okay. actually. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Quarantining theater. Yeah. With Nobody Loves Me, was, were, was that recorded you recently enough to where you know the lockdown was happening and it, it was a coronavirus a thing at this point yeah i wrote okay. one uh, with two girls in, in sweden and then we sent it to elio and she wrote the second verse so that was also antibody situation you know sure in sweden <laughs> but was it done like with Elio? Was it you send it to her and then she was able to do her part and then send it back? So it was similar. Yeah. I mean, it was like a computer, you know, Zoom ish yeah. song, which yeah. that's pretty cool considering you weren't only a, a fan of it <laughs> in the beginning or still. But I mean, to, to still be able to to utilize the technology to put the song together. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it's. I think it's amazing that we can use technology in that way. But mm-hmm. I still, if I could choose, I still. I feel like I'm so much more creative meeting people, mm-hmm. yeah, and creating songs in real life. You know, with yeah. Well, it seems like things are starting to kind of open up a little bit. Hopefully, you know, sooner than later. Yeah. Are you still? Are you working on new s- songs right now? Yeah, I'm trying to put my album together. Okay, that's awesome. That's really exciting. Do you, any other details on that or just kind of focusing on that right now? Um, well, I'm trying to, I would love to say that I'm going to release it hopefully this year. But okay. I don't want to put too much pressure into it because obviously we don't know when we want to be safe. Right. And it's Corona made it so much harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, on the uh, technical end like this, I have a question for you about uh, your your performance on Stephen Colbert, because you did the the safe at home or at home performance. Mm-hmm. Was that strange or how, how was that experience? Uh, it was also weird because I, I, I was sitting in an apartment for months and then we were doing the at home production, which was super, like super safe. Everyone got tested and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but I, I didn't really plan on doing uh, so many songs. I was only planning on doing one song and uh, <laughs> she, the song that I'm performing, mm-hmm. uh, I, 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 I didn't even have like time to rehearse. So we oh, just wow. did it. So that was actually the first time we performed it live and like no rehearse. Wow. So, um, and that's that was, when they aired because you said that you did it multiple songs. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that one was, yeah. That's cool. Well, obviously you did a great job at it. That must've been really nerve wracking. Like, okay, now do the song that you haven't performed yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not to mention well, it's on this huge television show. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it went kind of great, um, but obviously it's um, it's harder to like practice. Like I'm, I I really am looking forward to performing live 
Mm -hmm. Like, that's, I, ugh, I love performing live and I, I love obviously to meet people and, uh, you know, it's, it's the best to just connect with people when, when you perform. And now I feel like I'm going to be, uh, it's going to be hard to, you know, remember how to like, oh, like how, oh, how does this work? You know, the in there. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, how do I do this? <laughs> I'm going to be like, oh, a little rusty. Shy, <laughs> rusty and shy person again. I think everybody will, you know, I mean, it's not like yeah. you're the only one in the world that hasn't had a chance to perform. So I'm sure people, yeah. and I think people, people will be so, so excited to, to see a show. It doesn't matter what's happening. No, that's true. Maybe lower pressure on me <laughs> but actually yeah i don't know i feel like people were so creative during the uh pandemic like last year like during the lockdown like mm -hmm. people were just stressing me out with their creativity just being so creative like oh let's do this at home and let's do this and this and i'm like i'm just trying to survive <laughs> right well everybody else process i mean people process it differently i've heard people yeah. say you know I've, I've how much more inspiration can i get out of the same you know four walls i've been staring at for the past six seven now we're almost you know coming on thursday i think it's like a year since yeah, this whole crazy. shutdown started so i mean you got a song out of it and it's an incredible song at that so there you go thank you how has <laughs> how was the year for you yeah, it's been it's been interesting as well. I mean, <laughs> well, I was telling Megan that we just moved to cross country here in California. We moved from oh. California to to Tennessee, so that's been pretty much the highlight of it. And that's why this room has absolutely nothing in it except for two posters <laughs> I was able to find. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. I didn't want to ask you. I was like, oh, you have really an empty room stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're like do you own furniture like what's up with you dude <laughs> or it could also be like one of those backgrounds that you can do on uh, oh the virtual soon. background yeah <laughs> i was like is that a real background or is it a uh, virtual but it's no, real it's, it's real. real and it's bare and depressing but it's okay we I have two posters i had to jazz it up a bit so there you go <laughs> do you have a dog i do have a dog what's what's the dog's name his name is Sky, and why, my, we we adopted him during during quarantine, kind of right in the beginning oh. of quarantine. So he's a he's a COVID dog, um, but he's been great, and it was it was a great to you know have him kind of house trained, so to speak, um, during this. But yeah, it's been awesome. I love dogs. Dogs. <laughs> Do you have a dog? Uh, I mean. I like I, I grew up with so many animals so for me right now I don't have a dog but uh -huh. my my boyfriend's um, uh, dad and stepmom and they have the cutest little dog here in LA oh, awesome. and so I keep on pretending that she's mine I'm like I'm posing <laughs> with her on Instagram and people are like oh your pup is so cute and I'm like Thanks. yeah well she's she's a family dog so I guess she's part <laughs> just a little bit mine yeah exactly but babysitter and then, for a little bit <laughs> I, I will like i was babysitting her now for two weeks oh wow um, and it just makes life so much easier and it, mm -hmm. it, it just makes my anxiety just drops you know and every time you do something you just have this happy little creature that mm -hmm. loves you like more than anything uh, sure and if you're so. yeah upset or angry you're like yeah I can't, I can't be angry right now there's this dog exactly <laughs> you know? they're the best and yeah and in sweden i know so many people with dogs so i think i have several dogs That's amazing. but i want to get a dog it's hard though it's hard traveling and like of course, right now it would be perfect, but then thinking about the future and mm -hmm. I travel so much and like going back and forth to Sweden and all around, that's going to be hard. Yeah. So if you're touring and, and everything else, yeah. I'm sure it'd be difficult to, to have an animal, but yeah. you know, you have your, uh, your brother, your boyfriend's family, family's dog to, to come yeah. home to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna kidnap her. Don't tell them. There you go. <laughs> well, no, no, I thank you so much for uh, doing this. I appreciate it. 
Um, I have one more question for you. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Oh, I think just um, mm, be true to yourself and don't let anybody else. Such a cheesy thing to say. Gosh, such a cheesy advice. No, but I think it's super important to just uh, have like, um, how do you say it? I lost my English for a second. <laughs> Okay. no but like to have good standards to like to mm -hmm. to to not just because I, I know how badly you want you want to like create like you know a name in the industry but you have to be true to yourself and like surround yourself with people who have your best interest because you know I think it's just have high standards and yeah don't let anybody walk on you. Bring it back,